Hi, my name is David Rosales. I'm the pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Recently, a friend of mine shared something with me that I thought I would share with you. In 1942, C.S. Lewis wrote the book, The Devil's Letter to His Nephew. It was a book containing a fictitious conversation between the devil and obviously his nephew. This is part of what Lewis wrote, and it certainly is prophetic. How did you manage to bring so many souls to hell at that time? because of fear. Ah, oh, yes, an excellent strategy, old and always current. But what were they afraid of? Fear of being tortured, fear of war, fear of hunger? No, fear of getting sick. But then no one else got sick at the time? No. Yes, they were sick. I'm sorry, nobody else was dying? Yes, they died. But there was no cure for the disease? There was. Then I don't understand. Since no one else believed and taught about eternal life and eternal death, they thought they had only that life and they clung to it with all their strength, even if it cost them their affection. They did not hug or greet each other. They had no human contact for days and days, their money. They lost their jobs, spent all their savings, and still thought themselves lucky to be prevented from earning their bread, their intelligence. One day the press said one thing, the next day it, can, it contradicted itself. And still they believed it all, their freedom. They did not leave the house, did not walk, did not visit relatives. It was a big concentration camp for voluntary prisoners. They accepted everything, everything, as long as they could overcome their miserable lives one more day. They no longer had the slightest idea that he, and only he, is the one who gives life and ends it. It was like that, as easy as it had ever been. Hopefully you'll know that I'm not saying we all should ignore this terrible disease. We must exercise wisdom and prudence and not tempt the Lord our God. Still, we need to be aware of how easily we have given up our freedoms. We're living in a time when we're constantly being fed views intended to cause us fear. Our freedoms have slowly been removed from us. Many are yielding them willingly. May we be wise, but at the same time, may we exercise faith in God and hope. I, for one, am very suspicious of how many pressures have been placed upon our shoulders from a bogus impeachment, a false accusation against a Supreme Court nominee, a shutdown of our entire country through a virus, loss of jobs, anger in the streets. Fear has taken root in many hearts. As cynical as they may be to some, if Mr. Biden wins, I would not be surprised if everything settles down after the presidential election. If he doesn't win, chaos will grow worse. The foundations of our nation are under attack and we must be awake and aware. It's time for us to use the armor God has given to us for times such as this. Gird your waist with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Wear the shoes of the gospel. Take the shield of faith. Take the helmet of salvation. Draw the sword of the spirit. Pray always. God has not given to us the spirit of fear. Put your trust in him. Hold tightly to him. Paul said to take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Stand as a victor, feet planted without yielding. The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God. Our enemy knows his time is short. Do not yield to his propaganda. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong. You'll see the salvation of the Lord. No weapon formed against us will prosper. So hold on, behold what God can do. Stay in the word, stay in prayer. Wait on God. If your church is open and holding services, perhaps you should go. Get strengthened. For those who are part of our fellowship, I hope to see you this Wednesday or next Sunday. And remember this, we love you. And Jesus does too. This is David Rosales, pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.